Hi, I'm the Guitar Trooper, YouTube's favorite old guy. You've heard me say before that a producer can make a night and day difference in the sound of a recorded song. George Martin had a perceptive ear for optimization of how a record would sound on the radio, as radio play was the chief method of popularizing a song in the 1960s. Such was the case in early 1963, when George Martin set about the task of recording songs for the first Beatles album, which eventually was named Please Please Me. The idea of a concept album was non-existent in 1963, but when he heard them perform their set at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, he got an idea. George Martin, an educated musician and experienced record producer for EMI, wanted to capture in the studio the energy and dynamics of a live performance on the Beatles' first album. One thing for sure, it was going to need an opener song that was, in George's parlance, a pot boiler. It was late October 1962, and a 20-year-old Paul McCartney was busy at working at the home of Rory Storm, who was a fellow Liverpool musician, composing a song about how good a girl looked. He was working on chords and arrangement at this point, and had only just a few words and ideas for the lyrics. After he had a working version of the chords, he began concentrating in earnest on the lyrics, and had a draft pretty well done. He showed the composition to John Lennon. As is common with draft versions of new songs, there was a hitch in the lyrical flow. The second line just didn't exactly work right. She was just 17, never been a beauty queen. In fact, when John saw it, his quip was, You're joking about that line, aren't you? So, in short order, the line was changed to the non-committal, you know what I mean. And development of the song continued. Although it was not, as it turned out, in its final form, at an upbeat tempo, the band did perform it as part of their set at the Cavern Club at the end of 1962. The crowd seemed to like it, even at its rather slow original tempo. It was February 11, 1963, and the Beatles had convened at the EMI Studio 2 on Abbey Road in London to record 10 of the 14 songs for the upcoming Please Please Me album. George Martin, as producer, and his recording engineer, Norman Smith, were in the control room. The guys temporarily suspended their tour dates with Helen Shapiro so that they would be ready on the morning of the 11th for recording. But John Lennon wasn't doing so great. He had a raging head cold, but he was up to drinking tea and milk and keeping zoobs available to keep his voice usable. The first three hours of the day between 10 o'clock and 1 o'clock ended up being absorbed by takes of only two songs, one of them being George Martin's intended opener for the album, which, after nine takes, was still not up to the level that he wanted. They took a break. Well, to be more accurate, the technical staff took a lunch break, leaving the band, at their own request, in rehearsal. This was unheard of, as the artists typically took a break, along with the technical staff. Later on, breaking long-standing traditions would become commonplace when working with the Beatles. Nevertheless, everyone involved started anew at 2.30 in the afternoon, and this session was more productive than the morning session, not only doing the final three takes of this song, but finishing up four of the other songs. The final take of the song, Take 12, was finished that afternoon and proved to be the best overall. After an extended afternoon session during which four more songs were recorded, everyone went home at 10.45 p.m. Fast forward to February 23rd, finding George Martin in a mixing session to create the final master for the record. He liked the last take, but he wanted to hear the count-in as they would have done it in a live performance. And that count-in, one, two, three, four, just wasn't as energetic on take 12 as it had been on take 9. Take 12! <laughs> <laughs> Take nine. One, two, three, four. 
Using the best from both takes, he appended the count in from take 9 to the beginning of take 12 to replace the rather non-existent one. The opening song for the Please Please Me album, The Pot Boiler, I Saw Her Standing There, was ready. Although one cannot prove that things might have been different if I Saw Her Standing There had not been the first song on Please Please Me, there is no denying that it set the energy-laden performance mode for that album. Released in the UK on March 22, 1963, only five weeks since the bulk of the recording was completed, the album Please Please Me went to number one on all four British album charts and stayed there for 30 weeks when it was replaced by <laughs> With the Beatles. Meanwhile, in the U.S., Capitol Records had not yet embraced the Beatles as a viable act, and VJ Records had temporary dominance for distribution of all of the group's recordings, releasing a trimmed version of the album, retitled as Introducing the Beatles. The opener was still there, but the engineers at VJ Records thought that the carefully crafted by George Martin count-in on the master was not intentionally included, and so the song on the VJ album began with Paul shouting, Fall! Huh. The VJ album was also missing the songs Please Please Me and Ask Me Why in order to conform to the 12-track standard format of U.S. albums. It did poorly. In early 1963, the U.S. could still deny Beatlemania, but that denial wouldn't last for long. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I particularly want to thank you for watching the video this long. A lot of people don't, you know. If you enjoyed the video, please click that like button and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I also invite suggestions on your comment for video content for subjects concerning pop music between the 1950s and 1970s. This would also be a great time for you to subscribe to the channel if you're not yet a subscriber. And if you are a channel subscriber, you should consider upgrading your subscription to channel member status by clicking that join button on the main screen. With channel membership, you have access to new videos days before they are released to the general public. Thanks again for watching.